Well, let's bring in Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, we got so many different things to talk to you about. Uh, but first things first, on this Twitter revelation, we knew about the shadow ban and couldn't get confirmation. What is your takeaway from what we hear about the suppression of uh, Dan Bongino, Charlie Kirk, and others? Well, Brian, as you said, I think it just confirms what we all knew was happening, that Twitter had engaged in censorship and shadow banning and blacklisting of center-right voices uh, across America. It looks like they particularly had it in for anyone affiliated with Fox News, as you mentioned, Dan Bongino and Charlie Kirk, also Jay Bhattacharya, a Stanford Medical School professor who dissented from the left's uh, party line on the coronavirus lockdowns and policies who often appeared on this network. Um, but it gets to a deeper, a deeper point, which is that the progressive left in America simply no longer believes in the principles of free speech and free inquiry and open debate. They rely instead on censorship and shadow banning and blacklist. That's right. very bad for our democracy. It's very bad for the spirit of open debate that any democracy relies on. And I'm very glad that Elon Musk has exposed this. And I just have to say that some of these Twitter executives have testified before that these practices didn't occur. So the new House uh, Republican majority, I think it just has another line of inquiry for their oversight hearings in a few weeks. You yeah. know what gets me? It's like the, all the doctor said was that lockdowns are harmful for children. We all knew that. At the time, you taught, we interviewed a million parents, and they all said the same thing. My child is not doing as well. Then the test scores prove it when they get back. You talk to any teacher who says the same thing, that they, the kids are behind. I mean, that's what happens when you keep your kids out of school for a year. But who told them to do it, that? Exactly. We want to get to the bottom of that. But what he was saying was not so outrageous. Why wasn't that allowed to be said? Second thing, when Jack Dorsey uh, sits in front of Congress, and he's under oath, and he says he wasn't doing this. Now, he said he wasn't shadow banning, so maybe this is semantics. He, he might say it's called something else. Visibility filtering. Right. Which so, is shadow banning. So uh, is he held accountable for that? What happens in that situation? Yeah, Ainsley, I think our friend Jim Jordan, the new chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, just got an, another uh, line of inquiry <laughs> right. added to his long line right. of inquiries for the oversight that needs to be conducted on the administration and on their allies in corporate America. Another thing I want to point out is, I mean, Twitter is not a small company. It is remarkable that this was happening and you had executives lying in public, in some cases misleading the public under oath, and not a single person in Twitter spoke out, went to a newspaper or another website um, went to the government, went to a representative in Congress to be a whistleblower and say what was happening. It just goes to show how monolithically left-wing these companies are. Absolutely, and we wouldn't know any of it had Elon Musk not bought the whole joint for 40 billion bucks, but now it's being laid bare. Uh, something else we wanted to talk to you about, another jaw-dropping development over the uh, in the last hour hour and mm -hmm. 15 minutes and that is one of your colleagues in the u.s senate kristen cinema uh no longer is a democrat she is now registered as an independent the big question is whether or not she would uh caucus or meet with the republicans or democrats if she met with your side it would help you you'd be back to 50 50. Uh, todd pergram says that fox is being told cinema is expected to maintain her committee assignments through the Democrats, uh, suggesting she will caucus with the Democrats like uh, Senators uh, King and Sanders. So what's your, uh, what's your gut tell you this morning about Kristen Cinema saying so long to the Dem Democratic Party? Well, it's a reflection on the Democratic Party and just how extreme and left wing it's become in recent years. They've essentially uh, drummed Kirsten Sinema out of their party. Look, we don't agree on many issues, but I I've told her over the last few years that if she wanted to dip a toe in the Republican Party's pool, we'd be happy to <laughs> have her jump in with us as well. I don't know. I haven't talked to her this morning since this news has been breaking. I, I knew this is something that might happen, but I, uh, I would just tell her that uh, if she wants to come over and join us, we'd be happy to welcome her into our party. We're a big tent party. We have everyone from... Susan Collins to Ted Cruz uh, in the Senate with us. Um, the Democrats, let's mm -hmm. just say, don't have that degree of diverse viewpoints and don't welcome people who dissent from their party line, kind of like we saw in the Twitter story as well. Yeah. They simply do not brook any dissent from their party line. So, uh, but we'd be yeah. glad to welcome uh, Senator Cinema into our ranks. So it caught us by surprise this morning. This, re this interview was recorded last night. She gave a 45-minute interview to Politico saying this titanic news. Listen. I know some people might be a little bit surprised by this, but actually, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, a growing number of Arizonans 
and people like me just don't feel like we fit neatly into one party's box or the other. What I think is important about this decision and, and this move is that I'll be able to show up to work every day as an independent and not be you know, stuck into one party's demands of following without thinking. You know, removing myself from the partisan structure, not only is it true to who I am and how I operate, I also think it'll provide a place of belonging for many folks across the state and the country who also are tired of the partisanship. Removing herself from the party structure, but still caucusing with the party. You, we watched that together for the first time. What's your takeaway? Well, again, it's a reflection on how extreme the Democrats have become. And it's not like Kirsten Sinema uh, is voting against Chuck Schumer's agenda half the time. And she voted for both of their big spending bills, for their gun control bill. Uh, she voted to uh, codify or to implement a, a very radical abortion policy as well. It's just that she won't take certain steps that are, are too extreme for most Americans, like trying to end the practice of unlimited debate and amendment in the Senate and, and make it a pure majoritarian body where the majority can roll over the minority and do things like pack the court system, maybe in the Supreme Court, make Washington, D.C. a state, uh, federalize our election law to take over election administration from our states. This is all an example of how Democrats are simply trying to change forever the structure of American politics to their benefit. She put her foot down on that last earlier this year and said she wouldn't do it. And, and I think you've seen uh, examples of uh, punishment and retaliation coming from the Democrats mm -hmm. at her. They won't dare I, do I that I think now. that it's just, an, again, an example of how extreme they've become. All right, Brittany Griner is home now. She landed in San Antonio, Texas. This is the front cover of the New York Post. I don't know if you can see this, if you have a monitor, but it says, deal with the devil. People are complaining. We're so glad that she's home, but people are saying that's not a fair trade. This guy is one of the, the worst criminals in the world. Listen to this. This is Mike Braun's take, who's a former DEA chief of operations. He's talking about how bad this guy is, Victor Boot. Listen. Victor Boot, uh, in, in my eyes, um, is one of the most dangerous men on the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. Without a doubt. He transformed these young adolescent warriors into uh, insidious, mindless, maniacally driven killing machines that operated with assembly line efficiency. The U.S. has indicted him on four terror-related charges, including conspiracy to kill Americans. What makes him a threat to the United States? He is a shadow facilitator. He's arming not only designated terrorist groups, uh, insurgent groups, but he's also arming very powerful drug trafficking cartels uh, around the globe. Meanwhile, Paul Whelan is still there. Is there any way that we can get him out? Nancy Pelosi said that we had to trade for for the NBA, WNBA player, because uh, Brittany Griner, because uh, we didn't have any other any other way to get Paul Whelan out too. He said he's in a different position, he's in a different category. They're accusing him of spying over there in Russia. Well, he is in a different position, Ainsley, because he's uh, not been uh, accused of a crime that he committed. You know, rogue regimes like Russia and China and Iran always accuse Americans that they detain unjustly as spying. Whereas Brittany Griner, uh, whatever you think of the charges against her, I, I mean, did commit those crimes. Now, we welcome any time we bring back Americans who had been held under unjust terms of confinement or unjust length of sentences, um, but we should have never traded Victor Boot. Uh, I, I just want to stress how dangerous he is. This is not someone who is selling firearms for street gangs in Moscow. We're talking right. about anti-aircraft systems, tanks and artillery, missiles and rockets that fueled thousands and thousands of deaths, rapes, amputations, torture, dismemberment. And now, and and now he's back with Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. Putin. Now he's going to help Vladimir Putin so, get yeah, all that and, stuff. Exactly. It, and this is, it's not just about his past moral culpability, it's about what he's going to do now. This is not right. some decrepit 78-year-old man who is dying in confinement. He's only 55 years old. Vladimir Putin has wanted him out for a decade, but he's gotten even more insistent over the last year as he's gone to war in Ukraine, a war that is increasingly supported by paramilitary groups, private security firms, and warlords in right. Ukraine. Why do, we think, uh, why do we think Vladimir Putin 
held that Brittany Griner, sentenced her such a long term earlier this year because he realized that he could use her as leverage against Joe Biden to get back one of the world's most dangerous men that he could then unleash against the United States and our allies all around the world. We should have never released Victor Boot. It was a dangerous concession to Vladimir Putin, and it will set a dangerous precedent going forward. Well, it's uh, great that she is back home in San Antonio. We just hope that Brittany Griner now takes up the case of Paul Whelan so that nobody ever forgets about him as so many did for her. Yeah, a, he a Marine went over there for a wedding. I know. Senator, thank you very much for joining us on this very busy Friday morning. Thank you all. All right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.